have the opportunity today to speak about a story which is very moving to me personally and a story which we can all learn and gain a lot of inspiration from. And that is a story of a point in the Prophet Wasallam's life in which he did himself described as one of the most difficult points of his entire life. And we know that he lived a life of trial. But this was one of the most difficult. When he was asked later on by his wife, what was the hardest time he named this, this moment. But before I talk about this moment, I want to give some context. The Prophet ﷺ struggled in Mecca for many years. And one of the, his greatest supporters during the struggle was his wife Khadija anha. And his uncle, they were among his greatest supporters. And what happened is that within a very short time, they both passed away. And this was then named the year of sadness, Am al Huzd, because he lost both of them in a very short time span. Now, after going through all of this and the boycott and the loss of these two beloved people to him, his greatest supporters, he took a trip to a nearby city of Taif looking for support there. And when he went there, he found the complete opposite. He was thrown, stones were thrown at him, he was wounded, and he was even made to bleed to the extent that his sandals were sticking to his feet from blood. He was treated with the utmost disrespect. And as he was leaving, he made a very, very powerful dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what I want to speak about today. This dua. This dua has so many deep lessons in it. And I advise every one of you to really study this dua. In the beginning of this dua, the Prophet Sallallahu he says something very, very interesting. He says, Ashku. He uses this word Ashku, which we hear in other places that prophets have said. He says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I complain to you, shakwa. Now this is very important because we live in a world where we complain a lot. Shakwa is something we're all very, very familiar with. We're, we're used to complaining, right? If we don't get the service we want, we complain. We're very, very accustomed to complaining. And sometimes we complain about Allah. Now what does it mean to complain about Allah? This is when something doesn't go our way, or we're in pain, or we lose something that we love, or we're being tested, and we, we turn to Allah and we respond with, how could you do this to me? Or why me, God? It's not fair. This is a complaint against God. And this is something that a believer should never do. But what you see is that prophets themselves did something very different. They did not complain against Allah, but they complained to Allah. And that's a completely different thing. To complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't to say, Ya Allah, this isn't fair. It isn't to say, how could you do this to me? It's to turn to Allah like you turn to a close friend. And to turn to Him and to tell Him, it hurts. This is difficult. Help me. Complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Allah for help. It is to admit to Allah your own weakness. It is not to complain about Allah, but to turn to Allah and ask Him for help. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ did in this moment. He said, I complain to you. And this is a lesson for us. Because we in our lives are going to be faced with trials. We're going to be faced with times when we feel humiliated. Or we feel that we are in pain. We lose things that we love. Or we are tested. And this is a lesson for us of how to respond. In fact, in this dua is a cure to pain. 
it's actually it's actually a blueprint for success when you're being tried it's a blueprint for success when you're being tested and that blueprint is turn to Allah and humble yourself and admit your own inabilities don't try to put on a front with Allah don't try to act tough with Allah don't try to act like I got this with Allah that actually is the wrong answer when you are being tested the answer is not to try to to stand up and say I got this the answer is the opposite it's to bow down and to humble yourself and to say ya Allah I need you ya Allah I can't do it on my own and that's what every single prophet did peace be upon them all they all turned to Allah and they humbled themselves in that moment and they turned to Allah and they asked for help and that's exactly what the Prophet ﷺ is doing here. He says, I complain to you. What is he complaining about? He says, I complain to you of my own weakness. See, oftentimes when we are complaining, we want to complain about everyone else, right? The problem is always outside of me. We tend to be the victim of our own problems, right? We never take responsibility. We never humble ourselves. Instead, we, we want to blame others. We want to put the blame outside of ourselves, right? The change needs to happen from the outside. Prophets never did this. Even if you go and you look at our father, Adam السلام, from the very beginning, from the very beginning when he slips and he eats from the tree that he was forbidden from. You know, one would think in that situation, well, who made him slip? We are told in the Qur'an that the shaitan made them both slip. We know that it was the shaitan who made them slip by deceiving them. But what's so interesting is when you look at the dua of Adam السلام, he's not even blaming shaitan. He never even mentions shaitan in his dua. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسِنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ His dua is to say, Oh my Lord, Rabbana, oh our Lord, we have wronged our own selves. He is taking full responsibility for his situation and for his slip. He says, we have wronged our own selves. And if you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we will indeed be among the losers. This is where success comes from, is by humbling yourself and turning to Allah. And that's exactly what every single prophet did when they were faced with trial. He says, Oh Allah, I complain to you of my weakness, my scarcity of resources, and the humiliation I have been subjected to by the people. Oh most merciful of those who are merciful. This is another point I want to reflect on. And that is oftentimes when we're being tried, we're going through difficulty. Sometimes we feel angry at God. We feel angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This how could you do this to me attitude. But when you look at the, the responses of the prophets, peace be upon them all, within their pain, they are focusing on Allah's mercy. They aren't saying, God, how could you do this to me? They're saying, God, you are the most merciful of the merciful. Look at Ayyub alayhi salam, right? He was tested year after year after year, losing, 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 right? He lost his health, his wealth, his family. And finally, what does he say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Anni masani adurru wa anta arhamur rahimin. He acknowledges that he's in pain. He acknowledges that difficulty has befallen him. And in the same breath, he says, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. And so the believer here, this is a blueprint. The believer continues to focus on Allah's mercy when they are being tried. The believer doesn't lose hope. The believer continues to focus on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they are in their pain, while they are being tested. And that's the blueprint for success. And you are the most merciful of the merciful. And that's exactly what Muhammad sallallahu is focusing on in his most difficult time of his life. O oh Lord of the weak,
and my Lord too. The Prophet ﷺ is acknowledging that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's humbling Himself. I want to just emphasize, there is a theme of humility. The only way out of a storm is by getting down. See, this is the thing, you know, I, uh, I grew up in the Midwest, and you know every region of the world pretty much has its own brand of natural disasters, right? You have areas where you have earthquakes, like in California, you have areas where you have hurricanes, you have areas where you have tsunamis, you know, you have sandstorms, and in some places you have tornadoes. I grew up in a place where we had tornadoes. And one thing that you learn about tornadoes, and it's interesting because every natural disaster has its own escape route. Right, its own place where you can go to escape. And for a tornado, the only way to escape a tornado is to get low, is to get down. And the lower you can get, the more safe you will be. That's why you're supposed to go into a basement. Or if you don't have a basement, just get as low as you can. And that's the thing about storms in life, is that if you want the fastest way out of a storm is to get down is to get low, to humble yourself, and to turn to Allah, and to beg for help. And this is what every single prophet did, peace be upon them all. They never stood up and said, I got this, watch me. You know, bring it on, that kind of attitude. They never relied on themselves. They got down, they humbled themselves, and they always relied on Allah. And they always focused on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They never lost hope. They didn't despair and they didn't get angry.